Well, hi everyone, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson, and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. I'm also an emeritus professor of clinical dentistry at UCLA, and I have a private practice in West Los Angeles. And at long last, we are going to complete this cast gold restoration quadrant that we started in a previous five-part video series. So I'm going to take you through two more parts. One part will be on armamentaria and the second part will be on technique. I want to remind everyone that we have a cast gold and gold foil course every December, which runs three days and it's in San Dimas, California. It is about 90% hands-on and it's really valuable. Hopefully you can join us. But let's get started with the armamentaria for these castings. We have a little pin retain casting. We have that MOD with the experimental design utilizing the bales. Next to that one, we have a pin retain casting that covers part of the lingual cusp utilizing two pins. And then on the molars, we have a two part casting on the first molar, an MO plus an OL, uh, sparing the oblique ridge, which is always really fun to do. And then finally, we have an MO onlay utilizing a slot on the distal. So here are the castings. Uh, we have six. This is uh, the beautiful work that is done by Koi Habich. And here's the armor material we need for the procedure today. And, you know, it looks complicated, but actually it's pretty straightforward. And I'm going to go through all of the parts of this so you can set up a gold cementation tray in your practice. And uh, most of the things here are easy to obtain. There are a few things that are a little bit more difficult to obtain, and I'll talk about those just a little bit and perhaps give you some alternatives to the more difficult things to find. Uh, the first thing I, I absolutely love is, is some kind of desensitizing agent. Here we have Gluma. I like to apply the Gluma before I cement uh, to protect the tooth from any uh, sensitivity that may uh, occur from time to time. I like to use a cement uh, called Ceramer. Uh, this is made by Doxa. It's an amazing cement. It's a little bit expensive, but boy, it is fantastic. Low film thickness. Uh, it mixes very accurately in these little capsules. It takes about eight seconds in your triturator and then you utilize a special gun to express the material into the cavity. And I found that this cement is probably an improvement over a traditional glass ionomer or a zinc phosphate because of its, its bioactive capabilities in, in actually attracting calcium phosphate and helping to remineralize the enamel margins. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is this metal object here in the back. And this is a cementation uh, device that you place on the inlay or onlay and then you mallet on the opposite side, not to, to force the inlay in position necessarily, but to vibrate out the cement and get the casting to overcome obliquity, which is the tendency of a casting to be frictionally locked on a wall before it seats completely. So we like to utilize a lot of pressure with our hand pushing in the inlay and then a very light tapping mode, actually holding the mallet not like this, but like this so that you have a more gentle uh, tapping motion. It's almost like a vibration. We can also use an orange wood stick or even a chopstick and you can uh, just tap on this. Uh, I like the the first one because it's off angle. Unfortunately, you cannot find these anywhere anymore. Uh, they're, they are gone. Uh, but uh, oftentimes I will just use two, two chopsticks or uh, I'll use my off angle cedar with another chopstick when I have castings so I have two areas that need to be seated. We're going to need to have some kind of cotton rolls. Uh, I like these that don't have the the net on the outside so that I can pull off really easily little pieces of uh, cotton if I need to clean up things. Uh, obviously two by twos, those are helpful as well. Dental floss is uh, critical. And then we, we want to utilize a bite stick assembly like this. It's really a floss tethered double bite stick. Now why would I use 
two byte sticks and not just one byte stick? Well, the reason is because all of these restorations will be cemented with the rubber dam in place. And when the rubber dam is in place, the bow of the clamp is going to impede the patient's ability to close down. So we can utilize this double bite stick over the casting and have the patient bite down forcefully over the onlay or crown, 70s crown, three quarter crown, full crown. I still use rubber dam for cementation of all cast gold restorations and ceramic restorations uh, when I can. But this is a, a phenomenal way to develop significant force to get the casting to seat completely. It's indispensable. Talk a little bit about our discs. These are the Moore's Mini discs. and They're only 3 eighths of an inch. They have a little metal grommet in the middle and one side has uh, got the abrasive and then the other side does not. And we utilize uh, a mandrel which is uh, made by Moore's also that has a, one's a latch and one's a straight hand piece and these have a mini uh, mandrel that uses a, kind of a snap type of expanding end on it that grabs onto the disc. These are the medium garnet, which are the, the first discs that we would use. You can use the disc uh, in the straight hand piece for almost everything except for the mesiolingual where you'd want to utilize the contra-angle. And I'm going to show you that dur during, the, uh, during the cementation video, which is following this armamentaria video. You might find that using a straight hand piece is odd to use in the mouth. You're thinking, oh, that's just... That's what I use to trim temperature, temporaries out of the mouth or adjust dentures or something or night guards. But in fact, this is extremely stable. It spins very, very finely. It doesn't wobble around quite like a latch type handpiece does. And I like to use it for most of what we do. This is a push button latch type handpiece. I love the push button. And uh, we like to use this with the grit facing in when we're using the mesiolingual. For the straight hand piece, we'll use the grit out or in. It depends on what part of the tooth we're in. One of the important things about finishing castings is to always rotate the disc from gold to tooth structure, which means that you're going to be constantly changing the direction of forward and reverse of both the latch type and the straight hand piece. So be prepared to be reaching over either to your uh, digital interface for your electric hand pieces or right on the hand piece itself for your you know air turbine style to be changing directions to make sure that you're always abiding by that principle. So in addition to the medium garnet we use fine sand and fine cuddle. These are all 3 8 inch discs. They make a half inch but it's just too big and tends to be a little bit too uh, flexible, too floppy for you to engage the uh, interface uh, really with a lot of control. But we do go through this sequence starting with the medium garnet and ending with the fine cuddle and that would complete our finishing of the casting. The polishing is handled with the powders. So I like to separate these in my mind that one step is to try to get the gold and the tooth on the same plane and get the surface as smooth as possible. And then the next step would be to go into the polishing powders to obtain a very high luster and a highly reflective surface. Uh, we're going to utilize number four flower pumice and flower pumice comes in different grits. It comes in one, two, three, four. We're going to get the four which is a little bit more of a finer grit. And then after the flower pumice we're going to use 15 micron and one micron aluminum oxide. Now these powders are sometimes hard to find but uh, there is, uh, I'll give you a resource for where to get them. You can also get them from us uh, at our, on our website if you really want. Um, I like to use them all wet and uh, I'll show you that later. This is a, a special cup made by a company called Young's and these are latch type and they are soft. They make a hard one that is white and a soft one that is gray. And notice that it has no webs. It doesn't have that cross in the middle. You never want to polish castings with a cross in the middle. That cross will throw the powder all over the place. It'll heat up the tooth unnecessarily and it's going to 
uh, create sometimes some of the rubber from the cup will get smeared onto the surface of the casting. So we really want to use the ribbed uh, cups and not the webbed ones. And these disposable ones from Young's are phenomenal. So let's let's just kind of go over this just a little bit and understand that we are going to, they look kind of the same, uh, at least the last two two, uh, um, when you when you have them sitting out without any labels. So I like to utilize plastic dappen dishes that have uh, different colors and, and go from the darkest to the lightest color. So I always know which one's which. Uh, and the other thing that sometimes is necessary is to have an additional burr kit for gold polishing. This gold polishing burr kit has a lot of really cool things in it for special situations. And I'm not really going to get into all of that today with uh, the cementation. I just use the traditional discs followed by the powders. But you could use a brownie, a greenie, and a super greenie to get into areas where the disc may not be able to get into. And if you're going to do these, these additional shofu or brass or abrasives, you're going to want to use them in between the powders. So we would use the brownie before the flower pumice and then the greenie before the 15 micron and then the super greenie before the one micron. I have played around with this for 25 years and found that this particular sequence works best. So if we had like an area where we had a, a groove that needed to be polished, we could get that groove with the brownie and then follow it up with the system in the way that I've described. This is troll foil uh, in, in my opinion. I believe it is the finest articulating paper that you can find anywhere. And the reason why I say that is number one is eight micron, eight micron. It's very, very thin. You don't get any thinner than that. The other reason I really like this is it has a built-in holder, so you don't have to mess around with uh, one of those uh, paper forceps or anything. And so it's rather stiff, so you can just get that in the mouth pretty easily. And then the most important thing is it marks really well. It's very interesting that something so thin would mark so exquisitely. And uh, I, I just haven't found that with other papers. Sometimes to get things to mark well, you need to dry off the teeth. And so when we're finished with the castings and we've taken off the rubber dam, you can fold up a paper towel like this and just have the patient bite down into this towel and you will soak up any slippery stuff off the teeth, whatever that is. And then when you place the paper in the mouth and check occlusion, it will mark incredibly well. Sometimes if everything is really polished and you can't see any marks, you can put a, just a very, very thin layer of Vaseline on the paper like this. And this works for all papers out there. This is a, a trick I have known for basically three decades. And that is when you can't get the paper to mark, make sure the paper is fresh and it's not run out of ink and not gotten too dried out, but also throw a, a small layer of film of Vaseline on both sides of the paper Make sure the teeth are really dry, and when you have the patient bite down with this, you will transfer the ink to the tooth very effectively. It's an incredibly uh, a useful technique for us. Let's just spend a, a couple of seconds here talking about this burr block. I love these 7404s. They're really helpful for adjusting occlusion. And uh, this is, you know, after you've done all this beautiful finishing and polishing, you want to have something that doesn't destroy this beautiful surface and you want to bring it back to the luster that you had before. So uh, I like to adjust with uh, some kind of a finishing burr or maybe even a fine diamond. Something like that can be done to, to create the adjustments and get access to areas of the casting that may be difficult to polish. These little 7901s are good for getting in a proximal and removing excess gold. Sometimes they'll even use the green stone and the white stone. Uh, they can be sometimes effective at getting access to difficult to reach areas using slow speed. The cups can be used, the points I've shown you earlier. And uh, I go into great detail about how to use this burr block during our course on cast gold. But I think just a short introduction uh, now is sufficient. These are the uh, sample of the castings as waxed up that uh, Koi Havoc sent to me. And uh, he does beautiful work. 
uh, and, and, and you know, his lab is temperature controlled, his countertops are temperature controlled, everything is weighed to a hundredth of a gram, uh, he's distilled water for everything to obtain castings that have this level of precision. And it's just, these are routine, these are not special for him, this is just what you get from Koi Havoc's castings. Uh, they're, they're phenomenal. And I believe that when you see how easily they can be delivered to the patient with minimal adjustment, uh, you understand why Koi Havoc is so popular amongst uh, those of us who do gold castings frequently. Uh, each casting requires a very different water powder ratio of investment, different temperatures of burnout time. So every casting is invested alone without another casting in the ring with the one that he's working on. This is the level of precision that you can expect. So in the next uh, series after this, the second video, the final video, we're going to show the cementation of those beautiful Koi Havoc castings in this quadrant. So thank you and I'll see you real soon. And remember again, we have this incredible course on cast gold and gold foil held at our center in San Dimas, California every December. Check it out. Thank you. Mm -hmm.